All right, Norway. What's up, Norwegians? Let's check this out. Inside Norway's $47 billion floating highway. I need to see this. What type of mega infrastructure project is this? What's going on? What type of amazing technology is going to be used? And what type of ar architectural wonders are we going to see? What's the timeline on this? Like, what's going on? Let's get into it. We got a 10 minute video. Let's check it out. Three, two, one. Let's go. Before we do that, make sure to like and subscribe. It's an order. I'm just kidding. My name is Mace, coming to you from Western Canada. Yes, I'm Canadian. I try to pol be polite. I try to be nice. I drink my coffee. I go to work. And yeah, pretty simple life. I like it. Let's check out this video. Three, two, one. There we go. Norway is I just started watching Lilyhammer. I'm enjoying it so far. Barking on the largest roadway infrastructure plan in its history. In fact, it may be the largest road revamp in the entire world. With a budget of $47 billion, this new coastal highway is going to connect areas of Norway that used to take Oi. 21 hours to travel between. It's going to bypass seven different ferry crossings and cut travel time <laughs> down by half. <laughs> how exactly is this possible? What? Well, by essentially creating the world's first ever floating highway. From no. state of the art floating tunnels. Wait, wait they've started? Dealing with safety concerns. Here's a look inside. What? Norway's ambitious new project. The almost 700 mile trip between the Norwegian cities of Kristiansand in the south and Trondheim in the north. So, Kristiansand all the way to Trondheim. Holy smokes, this is the project. Typically runs about 21 hours if you're traveling at an average of 30 miles an hour. That's over 200 US dollars in gas for a small car to travel just one way. Since 60% of Norway's exported goods are produced in the west coast, where a third of Norway's population also lives, there's a lot of traveling between cities to keep the country running. Lillehammer? With a new multi-billion dollar road project, Norway hopes to cut travel times and the cost of gas to get there in half. <laughs> With seven what? different ferry crossings along the way, getting around Norway is anything but a piece of cake. Especially when you realize that each crossing can take about 45 minutes and cost about 16 US dollars. Tourists may enjoy the scenic route, but those traveling for business or even medical purposes aren't big fans of taking the long way fortunately there will soon be a shortcut so what's the purpose here like i get that part can ships still go over that though thanks to the development of the new coastal highway route e39 this 47 billion dollar infrastructure project aims to replace the ferries with bridges and to create conventional tunnels as well as what could be the world's first floating tunnel to what form could the be the submerged roadway is essentially a pair of concrete tubes submerged about 100 feet below the water's surface this new and more predictable transport system will be a great benefit to norway's national economy it'll connect cities in ways they haven't been before and create new patterns of habitation for the people living there these new roads will also shorten the path to reach hospitals jobs and schools creating a more stable and diverse economy and a lot of happy commuters norway also hopes that the new highway will increase their population some areas like tissens a region of rural municipalities located on an archipelago off the coast have lost over 50 percent of their population in the last century due to inaccessibility the trend of population loss is continuing across Scandinavia. There are many benefits to restructuring the So it looks like they've started it, right? They're they're already building these these tunnels. This is this is a big project, man. Holy e smokes. But preliminary estimates show that the required investments and improvements will cost much more than the $47 billion highway budget. They estimate it could even be as Hundreds. much as 340 billion Norwegian krona or 38 billion US dollars extra. So why exactly does Norway want to embark on this crazy floating tunnel strategy instead of just making more bridges? Norway has a few environmental the fjords? issues with making roads. First, the harsh weather conditions can be... Un they want the fjords to maintain their pristine beauty. And also, yeah, the weather conditions. Unpredictable. With roads often closing whoa. and ferries having to whoa, cancel whoa, whoa, departure whoa. last minute due to snow, heavy winds, or high waves. This leads to people driving for hours only to be turned away at crossings and forced to put their plans on Oh, hold. that was Norway close. Norway is also home to many deep fjords, which makes things like bridges necessary. But they can have a huge impact on the environment and be unsafe in those harsh weather conditions. To decrease environmental impact and maintain Norway's natural beauty, the best and most efficient highway is the one that's almost completely hidden. 
With this in mind, the innovative new design Norway is going with is known as a Submerged Floating Tube Bridge, or SFTB. Ariana Minaretti, a chief engineer in the Norwegian Public Roads Administration, told CBC that... Submerged Floating Tube Bridge. Okay. Some stretches they have studied will have average-sized tunnels of about 5 to 6 kilometers long while others might be only 600 meters long. She also explained that the submerged floating tube bridge was actually first conceptualized by naval architect Sir Edward Reed all the way back in 1880. say, it's like some science it fiction type stuff in though. Norway in 1923, but the technology still wasn't quite ready for such a big project. Now, finally, the idea dating back more than a century is close to becoming realized. With bridges that span long distances, you need arches and suspensions at certain points. But for a submerged floating tunnel, if you do it absolutely correct and balance the weight of the structure with the buoyancy of the structure, it can go on forever, said Niels Erik Anders Ronquist, a professor of structural engineering <sighs> at the Norwegian University. It's kind of scary, though, just thinking about driving through there. It's gonna make some it's gonna make uh for some good disaster movies like i told you guys i've seen the wave the wave that norwegian film which already scared me but like what if an earthquake happens to these things hey eh? city of science and technology who now works as a consultant on the new highway project when a fjord is deeper than 100 meters or wider than two to three kilometers the seabed is too deep for a traditional rock tunnel because it implies the use of a huge amount of land on the shores Suspension bridges seem like an obvious second choice, but the harsh winds can endanger travelers and force the closure of these bridges. But with a floating tunnel, all of these issues can be avoided. Though the floating tunnel is buoyant, the tube itself isn't actually floating. The tubes are stabilized by cables tethered to the seabed or by pontoons floating on the surface at roughly 800 foot intervals. They better make the sure this idea is architecture is done because good. We'll be able to easily see the location of the tunnel. And with the actual tunnel far enough beneath the water's surface, ships, boats, and even submarines will be able to easily avoid collision. The experts have decided I hope so. that 20 to 50 meters or between 60 to 150 feet below the surface is sufficient depth to avoid collisions with water traffic while also avoiding a depth that could cause increased water pressure. One of the proposed new tunnels is in Bonnefjorden and it's called the Rogalin Fixed Link or simply Rogfast. Construction has already started on the submerged tube bridge that'll be 390 meters deep and have a 27 kilometer long tunnel making it the wait. 390 meters deep deepest and longest undersea road tunnel in the entire world a spur connection to the island municipality of Kritsoy will be included in the design creating a place where people can exit the E39 to enter a small village like conventional tunnels the floating tunnel will also have escape routes that motorists could take to return to the surface in case of an emergency the rock uh, escape tunnels Fast tunnel will have emergency exits every 250 meters. And where's the emergency exit go? Into the ocean? Great. 820 feet, along with emergency lights and phones at various intervals. The work on this particular tunnel started in 2018 and was expected uh, to be completed in 2026 for a cost of 2 billion US dollars. But with the project already overrunning cost estimates, it's now only expected to be completed by 2029. The government has proposed fundraising of an extra 1.3 billion Norwegian krone or 145 and a half million US dollars. And they plan to put I mean 145 US dollars is like nothing when it comes to this type of project. Like this is going to be a it's going to be expensive, man. I mean, hats off to the architects for the ambition of it, the audacity. Like, hopefully they can do it. This is going to be impressive if they get this done. Toll in place for 20 years after the tunnel's completion, with a fee of 150 krone per passage for light vehicles. That amounts to about 16 US dollars, which is about the same price it would take you to hitch a ride on one of those ferries. The design for these submerged tunnels is definitely innovative, but with innovation comes a lot of brand new problems. Fires and explosions are a major concern, as escaping an underwater tunnel is <laughs> Die hard with the easiest thing to do. That's a good ass movie right there. Just imagine being stuck 150 feet underwater while Jaws. disaster occurs. 
That possibility is enough to make even the most seasoned traveler anxious. Thankfully, Norway yeah. is already on the case to make sure their floating tunnels are as safe as possible. They have been testing small-scale fires and explosions in their tunnels to plan for cases where a truck is carrying dangerous goods or two large vehicles collide. They need to have a prepared and standardized exit strategy, as well as a response team that can quickly get down to the tunnels if anything goes wrong. Access for emergency services is absolutely crucial. However, the this didn't look like Norwegians. I mean, like, I don't mean the people, but there's different. That's not Norwegian language. And for cases where a truck is carrying dangerous goods or two large vehicles collide, they need to have a prepared and standardized exit strategy, as well as a response team that can quickly. get down to the tunnels if anything goes wrong access for emergency services is absolutely crucial however the most challenging part of the design is getting to know the fjords and the best way to maneuver around or through them without causing any lasting environmental damage thankfully the Norwegian Public Roads Administration has been studying Norway's natural landscape for years to best understand how automobiles and the environment can safely coexist even with their vast knowledge and research the most challenging fjord to get right is the Sonja Fjord. At 3.7 kilometers wide and 1.3 kilometers deep at its lowest point, nicknamed the king of the fjords, it's the largest and deepest fjord in Norway, as well as the is hardest this where to on. Experts are still evaluating whether some fjords, like this one, are even suitable for a submerged floating tube bridge. While they may be in the process of creating these tunnels, research is nowhere near complete. The Coastal Highway Route Project is collaborating with three of the largest universities in the Nordic region, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, the University of Stavanger, and Chalmers University of Technology. They have about 50 PhD candidates working on solving different engineering challenges related to the E39 project, including how to maintain the tunnels once they're constructed and yeah. make sure they never break. The group is also working on solving general road. Like, this is such a mega project, man. I wholeheartedly encourage and, and wish the best of luck to these engineers. And the, like, once this thing is re really, truly underway, that's that's going to be insane, man infrastructure issues in Norway, including the development of intelligent transport systems, using solar energy to create ice-free road surfaces in winter, and how to digitally operate and maintain their road structures. It's a lot of work, but figuring out all of these issues looks like it's going to be completely worth it for Norway. A continuous E39 highway that's accessible 24-7 despite harsh weather conditions will please inhabitants and tourists alike. As it is, Norway makes more than 50 billion krona or 5.6 billion US dollars in tourism each year. But a new and more efficient roadway is expected That's to improve beautiful. that number. The E39 will also create new links between islands and the mainland, encouraging more economic activity in areas that used to be a lot harder to visit. Norway hopes that their new floating highway will be accessible to traffic by 2050. It plans to be about 1100... 2050? Man, we've got a long way ahead of us for this, but kilometers long by the end of construction cutting back on all of the seven ferry crossings plus an additional cutback of 50 kilometers of roadway while this ambitious project might be the first structure of its kind it definitely won't be the last engineers in italy and china are already pursuing similar concepts now the only question is who will finish first would you drive in one of these floating tunnels dang guys we got a 25 year wait <laughs> 25 year wait that's incredible man engineering blows my mind it blows my mind. It's true, though. That'll, you know, if it does get completed, it'll drive, you know, economic activity. It'll bring up uh, the demographics and the populations of places that were just previously too hard to get to. Uh, it'll make tourism kind of explode and uh, much more uh, attractive to tourists to go to some of these places that, you know, you got to take seven ferries to get somewhere. It's, it's not as cool to do. Interesting, man. All right. That was... Uh, a look into a very interesting architectural endeavor, I might say. All right. Cheers. And remember, drink lots of water.